Thank you, thank you. This is such a hugging community. Who wouldn't want to come back here? I would love to come back here next year. Uh, my name is Arun Gupta, and um, I'll talk about uh, serving your containers uh, using Chef. Now, as a CNCF board member, I talk to a lot of our customers around containers, open source, serverless strategies. Their question to me is, how is Chef relevant in this world? Should Chef be used to manage your containers? My question back to them is, should Chef be used for managing containers? Or should it be used to manage the underlying layer for you? So let's take a look at it. What does it mean? At AWS, we have this concept of a shared responsibility model. Security and compliance are a shared responsibility between AWS and customers. AWS takes care of the host operating system, virtualization layer, and the actual security of the physical infrastructure. Customers, on the other side, takes care of the security of their application, choosing the right application stack, security, gateways, you know, firewalls, and things like that. This gives a very flexible model between AWS and customers to choose the right stack that fits for their needs. Let's take a look at it, how this model is relevant in the world of containers, and particularly Chef. What is the advantage of building application using containers? And I mean, I'm not gonna go into selling containers here, but they make it really easy to build, deploy, and scale your applications. All your application configuration is packaged together in a container, and that is sort of your unit of truth, and that is one single source of truth that moves between your dev, test, and production to cut down any impedance mismatches. Now, at Amazon, we have several offerings by which can help you to deploy your containers at scale. We launched uh, Amazon ECS um, over three years ago, so this is our native uh, container managed solution. We, of course, announced EKS, or Managed Kubernetes Service, at last year reInvent, which is in limited preview, so you can run your containers over there. Um, we also announced AWS Fargate, which is a provider where you don't even have to worry about container clusters. You know, you just bring your containers and we run it for you and we scale them for you. And then of course, we have a managed registry here as well. Now when we look at container infrastructure, let's see how we look at them. Well, before that, let's take a look at what is managed EKS. In terms of managed EKS, it gives you a managed control plane. If you think about Kubernetes, it has a control plane, which is the masters, and it has a data plane, which is the worker nodes, where the actual containers are running. The control plane is highly available, is spread across multiple availability zones in a region, so you don't have to worry about a master going down or impacting your cluster in any sense. We do automatic upgrades for you. The key part here is you have to still bring your own workers. That is the data plane. And those workers are, by the way, created using Packer scripts. We give you an opinionated version using Amazon Linux 2, but you can use Packer scripts to create your own armies as well. Let's take a little bit deeper look into how data plane and control plane really looks like. Now, if you think about it, on the control plane layer, there are three main components. There is a cluster manager. The cluster manager is responsible because end of the day, you are running a cluster of EC2 instances. On those EC2 instances, you need to make sure that those instances are up, their health check is maintained. If an instance goes down, bring it back up. We have primitives like auto-scaling groups that serves that need very well. You need a scheduler. You have so many containers running, you need to make sure that the scheduler is able to place the containers on the right node and meeting your requirements of memory, CPU, affinity, anti-affinity. And then, of course, you have a controller which makes sure that once a pod or a container is scheduled, the pod continues to stay up. In the data plane, of course, you have the usual layer where you have EC2 instances, and that's where your containers are running. So if you think about it from a container scheduler or an orchestrator perspective, control plane and data plane are the two key components. Thinking from Amazon perspective, yeah, we have our managed services, ECS and EKS. And then, of course, there is a lot of community effort that has happened, such as COPS, which allows you to create a Kubernetes cluster out of the box itself. So, before we announce EKS, so this is a huge shout out to the community which has built COPS as a CLI to easily create a Kubernetes cluster on AWS. 
So what we look at Amazon is a chef control plane. Now, in terms of chef control plane, essentially what we are looking at it is how each worker node sitting in the data plane can bootstrap to a chef automate server. Now, in this case, of course, we are using Opsworks, um, our managed service, um, and Opsworks for Chef Automate. And essentially, this is a managed service that is available in nine regions at AWS, where hundreds of customers are running thousands of nodes for Chef servers over there. Now, in this case, the idea is the EC2 instance is bootstrapped, or talking specifically in terms of Kubernetes, my Kubernetes nodes are now bootstrapped as chef nodes in the chef control plane. And they're appearing as all the chef nodes. So now I can start applying all the good practices that I've learned in the chef world to my Kubernetes nodes itself. So remember what I said in the beginning. It's not really used for managing your containers. It's used for managing your underlying layer because the containers do need to run somewhere. One of the things that we all need to remember in our life is just because there is a new shiny screwdriver in the world doesn't make my old trusted hammer go bad. So we want to make sure that we continue using all the tools and the right tool for the right job. So let's take a look at it on how this plugging or bootstrapping my Kubernetes nodes to chef control plane really works. Well, first of all, I would like to launch a chef server. So the way I launch a chef server is, you know, I'm gonna go to my AWS console, I'm gonna click on AWS Opsworks, and voila, I got a fully managed chef server. I don't need to manage it by myself. The second thing I need to do is, I wanna launch my Kubernetes control plane. And when I'm launching my Kubernetes server, or worker nodes specifically, I'm gonna make sure I configure my worker nodes so that now they are bootstrapped as chef nodes as well. And last thing that I'm gonna do is, because the way Kubernetes worker nodes are created, they use a default image. When I'm putting this into production, I wanna make sure that my nodes are SSH hardened. I wanna apply my compliance profiles to it. I wanna make sure I'm able to detect one step and correct the second step. That is an important aspect, particularly when you're taking your application into production. So let's take a look at this live in action, how, how this is possible. So with that, we're gonna switch to demo here. So with me, I have uh, Darko up on stage. Hello, Darko. Hello. All right, so what we have done over here is um, we have created a Kubernetes cluster using COPS. Um, so huge shout out to the COPS team. They've done a fantastic job. COPS really gives you a CLI by which you can easily create a cluster. So you can say COPS create cluster, number of master nodes, number of worker nodes, the availability zones, all that, so it can create Kubernetes cluster across the world the way you want to. Now, once you have created the cluster, it also gives you the capability by which you can export the configuration of the cluster. So you can get your cluster configuration, the configuration for each nodes, and all that. So we have done that already. So let's take a look at it on what our cluster looks like. So if I show COPS get config, it says no cluster found. COPS get clusters. COPS get cluster. <laughs> this is real, guys. This is not a demo monkey here, okay? So I have my um, COPS cluster created here. It shows um, what is my cluster name, and you can see this is uh, spread across multiple uh, zones over here. So this is a highly managed cluster. Now, let's take a look at my kubectl, because my cluster is created, and I'm going to talk to this cluster using kubectl. So when I say kubectl config current context, it shows that my current context, my current kubectl is actually configured to talk to this cluster. Let's take a look at what nodes are available now. So if I say kubectl get nodes, and it shows me there are three nodes available. This is version 1.9.3 of Kubernetes, okay? So that's cool. I have my uh, cluster up and running. So at this point of time, what I've done is once I've created the cluster, you know, the steps that I followed, I created a dummy cluster, I exported the node configuration out. Now, when I launched my chef server as part of that, you know, using Opsworks, I get a starter kit. The starter kit is your chef repo as well. As part of the starter, uh, starter kit, you also get uh, user data. That user data kind of gives you more details about on how you're gonna bootstrap to the chef cluster. So I extracted that user data, 
and I put that user data into the user data section of COPS node configuration. So here is my node.yaml on how I created the cluster. So I'm looking at it, you know, I literally just copy paste the content from my OpsWorks starter kit to user data over here, and all the data is over here. So now when I'm creating a Kubernetes cluster using this node configuration, any worker node that comes up will automatically check in to my OpsWorks server, okay? So that's cool. Now, let's go back to my um, OpsWorks console. So this is my Chef Automate console. I am, you're all familiar with this very well. So this shows that my two nodes of the cluster are bootstrapped right over here. Now, one of the things that I see over here is the nodes are looking good. Um, now, let's look at the compliance of these nodes. So if I look at the compliance of these nodes, it says the two nodes are failing compliance. Now, it really depends upon what kind of compliance profiles are you running, and that will kind of highlight you know, what it is shown over here. So now, in this case, if I look at it, on the far right where you see, it says 53 failed compliances. So as a customer, I feel very uncomfortable taking this particular application into production, particularly taking this entire worker node into production. And if I click on the details over there, you can see there are a lot more details it gives you about the uh, uh, compliance failures. So the key part to understand is what we are showing you is just one SSH profile that is available out of the box you know, when you're running up a Chef Automate server, but applying that concept, bringing your current hammer and matching it with the screwdriver. That's an important aspect over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna update our Chef cookbook, we're gonna upload a new cookbook, which is gonna fix those profiles. Remember we talked about detect and correct. So now that we have detected, our next step is really to correct the profile over here. So now I'm gonna look at my books file here, and in the file, I've, what I've done is I have updated the role. Well, look at the bugs file first. In the bugs file, I have added a cookbook, which is SSH hardening. You know, so I've done the direction. So now let's upload this cookbook. So this just uh, my, of course, my configuration is configured for my ops work servers. My um, file is, or my cookbook is now uploaded. Once the cookbook is uploaded, I of course need to update my role as well, because the role should be able to essentially be able to run this cookbook. So I go to my file here, um, or my role file, and then I enable, by default is commented, I'm just gonna uncomment it, and once I uncomment it, and then I save the file, and I apply the role using knife. So now the correct role is applied, so that you can actually run this particular cookbook. And that's about it, pretty much. Just making sure that you guys are paying attention to the demo here. <laughs> and there you go, now the roles are updated. So what happens now, basically? So let's go back to our console here. And so essentially what's gonna happen is, now the cookbook has been uploaded, now the roles have been updated, so any time, the next time, basically, the nodes, the Kubernetes worker nodes, that are now chef nodes as well, they check in with the chef server, they will, the next time they check in, and by default the check-in time is 30 minutes, we have configured this to be a minute, so next time my chef nodes check in, they will kick the checkbook, and they will make sure that all the compliances, you know, at least are taken care of. And down here you can also see that my cookbook has been applied, so the SSH hardening is shown right over here. So you can see the things are making progress, so it takes about a minute for the nodes to check in, and then the compliance would be done with it accordingly. Well, and now, there you can see. So now, instead of 53 control failures, now we're showing you three control failures. This is a big deal, because there is no rebooting of cluster required. There is no, no bootstrapping the node required. You know, you just applied the SSH hardening profile directly to your cluster as it's running, and your app is much more ready for production now. And your, more importantly, your infrastructure is fully hardened up. The importance of this is how you can create your own custom profiles. You know, we are looking at the aspects like when we are taking the managed Kubernetes service out, there are certain hardening that we have done for the Linux armies. 
we can take those security profiles and possibly publish them to an ops work automate chef automate server and then you can apply those profiles so the way we have done hardening of eks armies you can do the same for creating your own kubernetes cluster and by the way what i'm showing you here is only for kubernetes but what you can do this you can apply the same concept to anywhere you're running container orchestration whether you're running mesos whether you're running docker swarm or another orchestration layer the idea is to take that user data inject this as part of your nodes so that those nodes can now be bootstrapped over here so all the hammer and screw can now work very well with each other so let's switch to the slides so what we're going to do is we're going to give this to you what we're going to we're going to open source this you know this work that we have done so far has all been done in a private github repo so this is a link to the github repo so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the laptop over there and we're going to make this github repo public for you so that you can exactly apply these instructions by yourself so this is my repo here you know and you can see this is on aws samples oh we're going to switch to the laptop Oh, we are? Okay. It wasn't good over there. All right, cool. So I'm going to go to the, this is my repo here. It shows this is private here. So I'm going to go to settings. And I'm going to go down here. And I am going to make this public. Ops works. Chef. Automate. I should have copy pasted that name. Automate. It's a mouthful. It's more fun this way. All right, voila. So the repository is now public. And that's one of the things that I do at Amazon. You know, I'm part of the open source team at Amazon. This is exactly how we want to partner with the chef community out in the open source. We are giving this back to the community because these instructions have been built, you know, by the OpsWorks team. So really huge shout out to Darko who built who did a lot of work on this getting this ready. So my last statement would be really, you know, I mean, uh, I love the movie Ratatouille, and when I look at it, I think about it, I don't want to be like Linguini. I want to be like Remy. So I don't want to run my own chef servers. I would rather do that undifferentiated heavy lifting, let somebody else do that for me. So use OpsWorks, come talk to us at the AWS booth. We would love to help solve your customer problems. Thank you. <laughs>